Corey Hart with Too Good To Be Enough. Now, here's the number two hit across Canada this week. Yo oh. hit. Today we're doing a very special show because with me I've got my friend and co-host, Corey Hart. Corey, it's great to see you. Listen, Corey, in your own words, I think it's important to tell the public what your future plans are. So, is there going to be a Corey Hart tour? When we had planned the, the Canadian tour, um, you know, it was something that was very special to me and, and uh, something that I had really looked forward to as I was touring elsewhere in the world. And, uh, you know, we called it a uh, going home tour um, because I was on my home turf and uh, we were going to play you know, one end of the country to the other, you know, big cities and small cities. And when the tour was, uh, was postponed, um, and then temporarily, uh, or tentatively, I should say, rescheduled for, for October, you know, the promoters and, and sort of the businessmen got involved and, and put their facts and figures together, and, and, and they felt that the most feasible way for me to tour uh, would be a mini tour in October of playing basically the major cities in Canada. Um, you know, and that's not the vision that I had for, for my going home tour. Uh, I would find it very difficult to, to justify to myself uh, and my fans why I would play a Calgary or a Toronto and, and not uh, perform in St. John's, Newfoundland. So although I understand uh, maybe the position coming from sort of the business attitude of it, um, for me, uh, I want to tour Canada when I can do it properly and, and put on a tour that um, my fans expect from me and, and the way it should have been in the first place. Corey, I want to read you a quote out of the uh, Thunder Bay Chronicle Journal by Jeff Hurst. He said, And each song came from a man with the intensity of someone close to or going over the edge, the eyes that burn and possess. Yet those same eyes can show hints of a shy and bashful man momentarily between each singing trance. Corey, that was said about your last show on June 30th. Tell me what happened the next day. The next day uh, after that, I went back home to Montreal. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, I was read that review um, a couple days ago. And it's a very eerie feeling to, to have read that because, I mean, I didn't realize, you know, when it says close to going over the edge, you know, I didn't realize that was the way I was portraying myself on stage. I know that for the past, you know, three or four months, I felt like, you know, there was a, a little time clock ticking away inside me, just saying, Corey, you know, you're pushing yourself too much now. And uh, it, it was something that um, I really uh, never thought would happen to, to, to someone like me. You know, I, I could always go, uh, you know, longer than the next guy. But uh, I went back to Montreal and I went to see a physician and. And he just looked at me and said, uh, boy, you're not looking too good. <laughs> he said, uh, you're pretty skinny, you know, and uh, you got to take off 10 to 12 weeks. And uh, the thing that, that bothered me the most about that um, was the fact that I felt I would be letting down, uh, you know, my audience and, and people out there that were looking forward to seeing the concerts. And, you know, I'm here and doing what I do because you know, I, I want to make people happy and I want to communicate with people. So that was the hardest thing to deal with. Corey, when I read that review, it, it mentioned, Jeff mentioned in there that you're the boy in the box. And you know, reading that review and the way I perceive you in concerts and talking to you, you really, you really are a boy in the box. Do you see yourself that way at all? I think to a certain extent, a, a boy in a box is, is someone that's that's rebellious and someone that, that wants to knock down things that, that are trapping him or maybe follow the beat of his own heart more than what someone tells him to do. And uh, to be honest, I've really never felt trapped by, you know, my career or, or you know, my success, quote unquote. Uh, you know, there are things that have significantly changed in my life, but, um, but never, never trapped. Uh, to be honest, uh, you know, if I'm going to be called the boy in the box, in this case, I, I, I just, uh, I just needed some rest. Some fresh air. Yeah, I just needed a little bit of air. Can you introduce the video for us? Yeah, this is a video called Boy in the Box, and we shot this in England, and, uh, 
couple of the guys in the cages uh, are some of the guys in my band. So I hope you like it. After these messages, we'll be back with my video, Can't Help Falling In Love. So, uh... My special guest today is Corey Hart. And Corey, songwriting is very important to you. How come you chose to do a cover version of Elvis Presley's Can't Help Falling In Love? I think it, had I thought about it um, quite a bit, I, I would have decided against doing it. And, uh, you know, the history behind the song was, and uh, you were there when I was presented uh, a jukebox uh, right. for, for my uh, diamond uh, um, ach achievement with Born the Box album. Um, well, for, for those of you that weren't there, it was, uh, it was a gift from my record company, and it was this old Wurlitzer jukebox. And it had a bunch of old 45s in it. And um, while we were recording Fields of Fire, um, the jukebox was brought up to the studio, and uh, I just kept popping in there and, and, and playing the same song over and over again, and this song was Can't Help Falling In Love. And the song was very special to me because it sort of reminded me of the sessions and reminded me of, of, uh, of the Fields of Fire recording. And in moments when I wanted to get away from everything, I would really just put it on and, and listen to it. So, really, on, on impulse, I just pulled the 45 out of, out of the jukebox and, and went into the studio and told Phil, the producer, uh, I said, let's, let's give a shot at this song. And, you know, he thought I was absolutely out of my mind to even, you know, even, even to consider doing the song at first. But, but after we, uh, we ran through a couple of times and, and, uh, and laid it down, uh, there was something very magical about it and, and very spontaneous. And, it's one of the few songs that is a, is a complete take for the vocal. You know, there isn't any composites and any compilations or anything. It's an actual start and finish take. Sam and I will be right back here on this balcony. My guest on Video Hits is Corey Hart. And Corey, the song Dancing With My Mirror is you taking a look back at your career. Is there something you haven't done yet that you'd like to do? Oh, there's, there's so much that I feel I haven't done. In fact, uh, you know, I often you know, tell people that are very close to me that uh, I've yet to write even close to the album that I feel I'm capable of writing. And uh, that applies uh, as well to my, to my live performances, although I feel that on this last tour, uh, I got as close to the audience as I've ever achieved. And there was something very, very special about the concerts in Japan and, and, uh, and the shows in America. But to answer your question, uh, no, I, I haven't even started, Sam. Do you have any, like, any, any future plans that you see down the road five years from now or, or one year from now? What, what's the next thing you want to do? Well. I mean, during the, the period that, I, that I've had off, and it's been about six, seven weeks now, um, I started to write, and, uh, you know, after every album, everyone says to me, oh, well, you're going to take, uh, take a long time now between the next one. And in this case, I probably will take a longer period of time than I have in the past, uh, only because uh, I feel that on Fields of Fire, I wrote all the songs basically in a, in a month segment, and somehow they reflect quite a bit a consistent mood or, or, or a, a feeling that I was having at that time. And they're, they're, they're a bit introspective and, and, and somewhat intense or personal. And that's fine. That was the period of time that I was writing those songs. And uh, I would think that on the next album, I would rather write over a course of six months and, and tap for maybe some different feelings and attitudes uh, that I'm going through. Here's one of Corey's personal songs, Dancing With My Mirror. Don't move from your seats because Corey and I are coming back right after this. Well, that's it for today's show. Corey, thank you very much for coming. Listen, could you wrap things up with the last video? This is uh, the first song that came off Fields of Fire. It's called I Am By Your Side. And uh, thank you very much, Video Hits, for having me here.